Welcome to the Whiteberg City Update. Please stand by for the top stories. Your top stories are work resumes around the churchyard and the surrounding townhouses. Those were your top stories. Please stand by. Alright, so before we even attempt to carry on building over this side, there's some stuff we've got to do over here. So I didn't make mention of this in the first update, but... All of these buildings over here were built by Krista and also Ozzy, I think. We've got the entirety of like Greenwich Market down here, which is just looking really nice. Now, eventually when this place is fully finished, we're going to get all this filled out with some stuff. Um, but it's just great walking around these little streets here. Uh, we'll do a full, full showcase of this one day. Um, but these were not rebuilt. So, <laughs> as you can see, uh, I pasted these in without uh, my perfs turned off. So um, yeah, sorry about that. We'll have to we'll have to fix all of this concrete powder so it's not falling down. But that was the awning for that shop there. Um, but yes, yeah, so all of these shops are actually pasted in, uh, and it kind of works. I'm gonna show you over here how it kind of works. So this is also part of the time lapse. I have to make sure the sun's in the right place. Uh, I always like to set it to about nine o'clock, three thousand ticks for this. That's what the whole project has been so far. And currently we've got to paste in the other half of these things here. Now there is a choice of either doing it with world edit or with this. It's um it's been so long I've forgotten where the world edit sort of paste point was, so I'm gonna have to do it like this. And I apologise, Aussie, because um I know you've got a lot of world uh, a lot of debug stuff in here. Now this might not work, and <laughs> we'll, we'll um we'll see how it goes. But these commands here are to turn off the um, updates and the. Um, neighbors so when you do paste stuff with world edit it kind of doesn't break I'm gonna stand here and actually see something so what I've done is I've actually like named and labeled everything uh, so it's the same in both the schematic and also in the world edit schematic so we're currently looking for GN 002 P that means paste and then it's the second one so the other pasting stuff is gonna be behind us so I think it's that one now I've loaded that in, I'm going to quickly uh, paste it, obviously we can undo it if all goes wrong, um, and let's see what happens. Right, well that's pasted in, bit of lag, and then, hey, I think that was in the right spot. And so what that's done is that's preserved all of the debugging, and Aussie doesn't have to come back on here and cry. I think I pasted it in the right spot. That was... <laughs> that really was a shot in the dark there. Um, cool, right, well, that's one little task done. Um, so that's just going to pop up in the time lapse just like that, which is fair enough. Actually, no, it's not. I have another plan. So with Lightmatica, you can paste things. Uh, and now I'm going to paste this in by shift clicking the left mouse button, no, right mouse button, no, side mouse button. And now what this is going to do is it's going to slowly paste in all of this stuff here. I think, yes, there we go. We're seeing it happening over there. So it comes in like block by block, but it's not going to do the dirt paths for some reason. Uh, that's not a massive issue. As I said, what's going to happen is I'm just going to do redo on my world edit and it will all come back in as it was. Um, so any debugging stuff didn't disappear. This is kind of what I had planned originally um, and I don't think it was going to work seamlessly because I don't have to stick to my plans all the time as you can probably tell with my many series that kind of start and stop and don't ever go anywhere. Uh, could not set the block. Okay, right. We'll see what happens with all of this. So no, it's not finished yet. I'm just sort of popping back in to say, I think I got a comment on the first update video about using Lightmatica to paste in for the time lapse. Now I have found a way to slow it right down, like you're seeing here. Uh, I'm just not 100% convinced it looks very natural slash nice in the time lapse. Um, so I think for the majority of the main big buildings like you know the church and the other one over there and everything is kind of the main feature piece that watching a time lapse really works for will be hand built because you, you control the uh, direction of, of travel at that point with this as you can see it's going like chunk by chunk but it's not kind of doing it in a very normal way it's sort of jumping all over the place and i'm like i don't like that it doesn't doesn't really suit what i want to do that's just my thinking about it all obviously there are other ways of doing it i'm sure within like matica you can do it so it pastes each block individually but that is just then me sitting here going ah, waiting for it to paste but that's fine i mean building it by hand is is great it's it's a way to master your craft and it's also just 
a way to relive those happy moments of burning it originally over many, many, many months. I want to cry. Although I just have had a thought, actually. This could be a way of doing it. I like how I'm very just jumping all over the place, very polarizing. Um, because what I've just remembered is I'm going to paste this back in with world edit so it doesn't mess up any of the debugging stuff. Hmm. We shall see in the future. This project's been a mess, <laughs> as you can probably tell. So uh, nothing we've done on here will probably be reiterating into future projects. There'll be a lot of, lot of lessons learned from this. I might have to make a video on that. This video, this series is just going to go on forever with me just going on about all of the issues that we caused with this. Uh, oh well. Yeah, no, I think it's good. And I think giving you a little insight into actually the entire process behind all of this is worth doing. Um, but yeah, I'm going to duck out again. You'll find me once all this is pasted. Okay, right. Half an hour later, half an hour later, it is now pasted in. And as you can see, not all of it has. So some of the stuff, like I mentioned, mainly the road. Now, I think that's an issue where it changed over 1.17 and grass path changed its name to dirt path. Um, anyway, so you can see all the windows aren't debugged. Like if you look at this here, uh, actually around this side, they're meant to be debugged. Yeah, they're all orange showing the wrong state. Now if I just type redo and we're back in the room. And now what's happened is all of that stuff that was missing from Lightmatica, all of the debug work and even the grass path now, has been added back in. And what this goes and shows is the final product will look good. Oh, look, that's Goblin. And it doesn't matter about the working beneath, but what you guys saw was a nice video of things being placed in randomly at random amounts. But yeah, so that's, that's one thing done. Uh, we do need to change the road here. And add the rest of the road in but yeah so myself and goblin are now on we're going to carry on doing this parkland over here so this is the schematic i think you guys saw yesterday well not yesterday on the other video which was coincidentally filmed yesterday um and i'm just going to turn that on right so we're going to be building all of this now so what we've got left is this little gatehouse here uh all of the paths through the main part of the park even a little kiosk up there and then the rest of this half of the building so what you guys haven't seen yet yeah is the back i don't think so here's half the back <laughs> it's just hampton court palace but slightly bigger and with some random pavilions on the side uh you will see this in all its glory soon it's incredible i can't wait to show you but yeah the rest of it is just a park uh, we need to put some more trees through here uh and then so these, these will be nice tree lined roads and it's all going to look lovely and dandy. There's some bits of landscaping left over from when we built it first. But yeah, so I'm going to jump out. I'll meet you guys once we've uh, done a bit more work on this. So see you then. Right, so you can see what Goblin's standing on here, actually. I, I forgot to mention how we're doing this. So we're all using the same Lightmatica schematics. Now, there's no way of like having it done through multiplayer or anything like that. So what's had to happen is each schematic has to be loaded in on the exact same block, which is this gold block here. Um, and then you kind of turn them on and off at whim where you're sort of working. So you saw earlier on that I had like a list of, um, of schematics in here and you can just switch them on and off. Obviously, it kills most PCs if you turn them on and off. Uh, so that's why the idea is you split it into different parts. So you can go through and build section after section. Now, what I've just done, actually, oh, excuse the lag, um, that's really killed me, is I've turned on the entirety of Greenwich House now. So while we move to it at four frames a second, we will see exactly what beauty stands behind there. Here is the real building. Here is the full structure with the three domes at the front, plus the four smaller domes in the middle, uh, and more domes all around it. The huge courtyards in the centre, and the little stable at the back there, which I was quite proud of. Uh, so this is what we're building next, and this will probably take the best part of several weeks to hand place every single block. Anyway, guys, we'll leave you there. We'll find you after we start at least some of the construction of this. Right, so you've caught me just about to go back in and start giving the graveyard here a little covering of some grass, some ferns, a bit of foliage to break up all of this flat grass texture, because as you can see, 
It's just grass texture for the eye can see there. Uh, I like to do it in a quite liberal sense. So around here you can see I've gone for quite a lot and it's including bits of tall grass as well as short grass. And as you can see, the graveyard is looking really quite nice now. Uh, we were debating, me and Goblin, whether to put trees down the centre here. Not entirely sure just yet. We're going to come back to you on that one once we are uh, probably have a bit more in. Uh, so in terms of progress here, churchyard is done, apart from a little bit of brushing. Then it's on to doing the rest of the building over there. Um, I think before we get onto the main Greenwich house, there will be some park building. I'm going to try and get the rest of the builders on to help with that because it's just a vast area to do. But yeah, so in terms of brushing, this is what I tend to do. So I grab myself a tool out. I've got myself there the iron spade and I type in the command uh, BR. That's uh, just S for sphere. Uh, and then what I want to usually do is about 5% per grass and then a 5% for fern. Uh, I think we're also going to do 5% for tall grass. Now, what you're going to say here is, hang on, you're not doing the tall grass as it should be. And I know, <laughs> but bear with, because it is a different texture to actual grass. I know it's slightly crazy. Uh, and then I tend to then do after that, uh, what's that, 85% zero so we kind of get a lot of space a lot of air in there uh, i'm going to put that as a 10 so it's quite a wide area um so what i then do as well is add a mask to just this brush i don't want to do a g mask or anything like that so i then mask uh, a multiple mask so i tend to do uh, greater than two which means well i tend to do zero that's greater than two because the world is as it is we haven't got tick speed on which means everything underneath this grass could or could not be grass so you don't really want to end up putting grass as in the, the, the proper grass stuff under your layer of grass it just looks a bit weird um, and these little um, commands here for the mask those two quote marks mean everything inside the quote marks is kind of a, a single mask so you'll see what I mean in a second so now I can just go around and to my heart's content add in some lovely bits of grass and what this does is it really really brings to life the gardens and just up, up near the buildings, you can put a bit more in there, a bit heavier around the edges where the lawnmower hasn't gone past or where the sheep haven't been let in to um, come back and start gnawing away at it. But yeah, you can get it quite heavy around there. So you get a nice little texture when you look across there and go, ooh, that looks good. Uh, yeah, I'm quite a big old believer that uh, while grass itself looks okay, left empty, when you start putting some of this down, you sort of go, hmm, it looks better with more then you get a bit too carried away. But when it's open space like that, I don't think you can get too carried away. Uh, you can see here we've got a couple of little holes. Um, oh, God, I've got the easy place mode on still. Uh, this is going to be filled in like that. Uh, we've also built the gatehouse here for the main entrance into the park. Uh, this is a bit more of a neo-Greek style building. It's added a lot later in. The main building itself was built in about 1730. This was built about 1830, so about 100 years later. And I've actually taken this design from the one at Imperial War Museum, which used to be the Asylum, uh, which is a little interesting fact there. There's a bit of debugging work left to do on that. But this just sits here at the gate. So let me let me embrace you all with some lag as I turn on the uh, Lightmatica, and we can see where we've got to. And it's alive, I think. So let me show you. Um, some of these trees aren't the same. <laughs> These are the ones that got pasted in, and these ones here, we have a few missing blocks, are the ones I've gone around and hand-built because I'm crazy. So uh, I think I've explained in the previous video there's a reach problem on paper servers, so if you reach too far with easy place, it does disappear sometimes. It's a bit annoying, but you can just go back around and touch them up if you notice any holes. There's quite a few holes here. Um, but yeah, so I've gone around and I've hand-built a couple of these trees which was tedious, and I probably should have just paused the time lapse and gone and found them in the workshop and come back over and pasted them in. But yeah, you, you don't learn unless you sort of do something that's all ruined in there. But yeah, so that's that one there and this one over here as well. Now the rest of this area, as you can see, is going to be parkland as well. There's some paths that need to go in up to the main building itself uh, and along with this area at the back. Now I'm going to have to go through and do a little landscaping here as well. So I might come off and start doing that. But guys, I think that's probably the end of this update. I hope you've enjoyed seeing a bit more of the mindset behind what goes on with each one of these sort of builds. So before you saw me actually introduce the entire project, this time 
you've seen how we're going about the project and learning on the job as well, which I thought was quite a nice way of doing these. Now, next time we will carry on with the parkland. As you can see, like I've just mentioned, there's a lot to do here. And also you'll see the updates for actually us building the Greenwich house because why not? It's the only last big thing we got left to do really before the rest of the stuff over there gets pasted in. Uh, and then I think it's just one more building we've got a hand build. That one over there in the distance. So guys, I will find you next time here in Whiteburg City. Until then, get inspired, get building, and I'll see you soon. Goodbye. That has been another program from the Whitebergian Broadcasting Company. Please stand by for more programming. Do not adjust your set. Thank you.